Once a director, always a director. Before we start, Oliver Stone wants to check the camera shots. Can I see the angle just to make sure? Can I see one of your angles as I go here? What are you shooting here? Sure. Can you just shoot a piece of film? I want to see what you're shooting. Stand I'm going to go over there and see it, right? Yep. Can I come now and watch? Yep. I can see everything in one go. Mr. Stone? There you go. You're inside me. You're not over yeah. me. Okay. No. You say that you're a storyteller. How important is it to you that your stories, your movies, make an impact? Every filmmaker, dramatist would love to have impact, you know. It's, it's a given. Uh, it's just accepted. But I, I, you, you do your best and you write or direct or film in any way to have as much uh, concentration of your ideas on the screen at one time and uh, the rest takes care of itself or not. Your latest project, The Putin Interviews, why did you want to interview Vladimir Putin? Well, this grew out of a previous situation. I had done the Snowden movie. I had been over there quite a few times. And I met uh, Mr. Putin. And uh, obviously, out of curiosity, I had asked him about Mr. Snowden and what happened from his point of view. He told me. I liked him. Uh, I respected him. Let's put it that way. I didn't know as much about him as I do now. And uh, one thing led to the other. What did Mr. Putin's people tell you about the parameters? Were there any no-go zones? I could ask him anything. He had no parameters at all, and he, he didn't look at anything, didn't demand any kind of cuts or anything like that, no. What was he like? Because I, I think you've said that you think the image he has in the Western world isn't entirely fair. What, what would you no, say he's like? I don't think so like? at all. I think uh, it's a politically, ideologically driven image, and I think that's the whole point of the series. I think you have to listen for yourself and judge for yourself. The man uh, speaks uh, articulately about what the Russian interests are in the world. And I, I would say to you that they're not about empire or expansion or aggression or a return to the old days, hardly. So did you challenge him? Did you see that as your I role? I challenged him and I teased him and I angered him. I, I hit every note I could, but I wanted to. You know, I, it was, I, I, I went at it, not as, as I said, not as a journalist. I was a, a filmmaker and he knew that. And he's a president of a huge country and he had to understand that I'm, I'm as equal, whatever you think. I'm a person and I have a point of view. Why did Russia hack the election? <laughs> I've seen the trailer and you ask him the question, why did Russia hack the election? Yes. Did he answer? He answered very clearly and uh, I asked him repeatedly because it's, be it's become a big issue in the West. And I think he answers very brightly and intelligently. I can't tell you what he said because the whole point of this, I can't talk about the interview, I hope you understand. I'm trying to say. Please watch it for yourself and make your own thought. You judgment. said at the time that, that you questioned the claims by US intelligence services that uh, Russia had interfered with the election. What do you think now? I, listen, I've always questioned the US intelligence services. The CIA has always been a very dicey operation. Again and again, uh, we see instances where the intelligence services, not just the CIA, but the NSA too, and the FBI, have f made huge mistakes and we've paid the price. Do you think that Mr. Putin is more trustworthy than those agencies? You have to uh, make sure for yourself. You should see the interviews and you'll see a man who says what he thinks and is pretty honest about it. Has anyone ever told you that you'd look great, really great in a coma? movie? <laughs> in another movie of yours, Wall Street, Money Never Sleeps, I understand that uh, Donald Trump had a cameo, but he hit no. the cutting room floor. Yes, yeah. yeah, sure. I didn't use it and I fault myself because I wish I had used it now, but at that point in time, it was a long movie and I was trying to save time. I cut his scene. If I had known now, I would have put it back in. Uh, so you spent time with Mr. Putin, you spent some time with Mr. Trump. Who is a greater threat to world peace? <laughs> I think the intelligence agencies are. You've studied at least four American presidents very closely. How do you think Donald Trump is going so far? Frankly, I think uh, it's been a disaster, <laughs> but I, I, it's just more a matter of style not, rather than substance right now. There's been a lot of bad things that have been started. But, you know, I lived through uh, Mr. Bush, and I think that was a far more profound impact right, that we've had on our country and our society with his uh, war policies and his Mideast policies. Are you worried about the future of the world? It's a I big am. question. I am very worried about it. I think uh, we're sleepwalking towards a nuclear nightmare.
I think uh, when, you missed, when you see my documentary, I think you can understand why. And what difference do you hope your documentary might make? I hope that we can, as you know, when you have these kind of weapons and this kind of power to destroy life on Earth, you have a tremendous responsibility and you, should, you have to listen to those people who don't agree with you. Oliver Stone, thanks for speaking to us. Okay, thanks, Jason.